Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last years of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. George C. Wallace Lover. But we got to read about starting back on the right foot. Coughing ca canapes. Canapes. There's only so much to stir the conversation among the restless, apprehensive titans of industry assembled in a nondescript Wall Street boardroom, awaiting the arrival of President Wallace's administration's latest business star. All the previous functionaries had either been incompetent or too political. They tied the proximity to the president, and the expectation that in exchange for the privilege of access, business would need to support the administration's more controversial policies. But taking sides so openly had been a non-starter from the beginning, especially as the opposition to Wallace's civil rights views had hardened. There were minimal expectations that the new guy would prove to be any better than the old. The new business are, uh, took a seat at the head of the table. I'm not here to lecture anyone. I'm not here to ask for favors or contributions. Politics is a turbulent business, and I know that turbulence is bad for business. What I can tell you is that I'm here to listen to your needs with open ears and with direction or discretion, and that the administration has given me the authority to bring your request to Congress with minimal political interference. The civil corporate suits were still hesitant, once bitten, twice shy, but it was an olive branch and there was a mountain of red tape to cut and regulations to abolish. You won't regret it. Followed with a necro to start the semester through Congress. The education system within the U.S. of A. remains one of the key factors in many Americans' success in the country, giving millions the ability to learn more than they ever could before. However, in exchange uh, act of reform, the Wallace administration has found it pertinent to push for reforms regarding the curriculum of education the children are receiving, with some apparently having said that a reinforcement of American ideals and a belief is what is necessary for the success of the country's future. Thus, the National Education Curriculum Reform Act, or NECRA, has issued a set of reforms to bring education closer to the history and the U.S.'s involvement in the world, such as the Second World War and other re-examinations of events, such as the American Civil War. I don't see anyone can dislike this. We're going to be teaching the youngsters about the strengths of this country and how they ought to be proud of it. What's wrong with that, President uh, George Wallace stated in a press conference following the passage of the bill? Many in the right have congratulated the President for his senatorial success in the passing NECRA, believing that these educational reforms will promote the American spirit and encourage greater devotion to the country than some of them in this country right now could ever hope to know. Meanwhile, a group of teachers have assembled in several areas uh, to demonstrate their dissatisfaction with NECRA and other educational policies of President George Wallace. Just because President Wallace has a knack for encouraging patriotism at every corner does not mean he can force down uh, that down every child's throat. Besides, challenging current systems... <clears throat> Our pathway to growth, not an encouragement to stand against the country, argued one math teacher from Vermont, leading a group of math mathematics uh, teachers whose jobs may become in danger due to NECRA's requirements demanding more history teachers across the country. Now the children will be more patriotic. I love it! And yes, we do. Academic base begins to worsen. Well, that's one person's opinion, but whatever. We're here to do a lot of things. So, overall, like I said earlier, this path is not, unfortunately, so much about racism, but um, more about Medicare and Social Security. But, oh, also the Jobs Act, too. Right now, we have enough support to get the Social Security done. So we don't have to do this. If I do a fourth route for George Wallace someday, I will blitz as fast as I can to go through all of this over here, through all of this over here, and through all of this. Education would be one I would not focus on very much, but to get Social Security and segregate security. But for now, I'm thinking, even though we have Wallace leads away, we're still gonna get it ready for Congress, because we can get it passed immediately. Of course, we can get massive support from the Dixiecrats, but I'm not going to try to go super hard in segregation probably for this campaign for now. Yeah, I think we're going to avoid this for now, because we don't have to do it. We don't need to do it, and it helps popularity, which would be good for elections and such, but also before we do that, I do want to show you that, um, well, our voter base doesn't really like our big government uh, policies, so it's not very good. So we'll lose some support, but get ready for Congress. We'll see if we can do this, and if we don't have to do this, well, we can do more stuff elsewhere. Now that we've decided what we, that we, what we want Social Security to accomplish, it's time to prepare for the Senate floor. We'll formalize a particular, shake hands, and get our final draft out of committee into the Congress. Uh, depending on the actions taken previously, we may have secured or ruined our chances of getting into the Wallace's desk. There's still time to prepare in case we have any other changes to make. Senate votes. Finalize the act. We're now in the process of completing the final draft of Medicare bill. This bill, if passed, will hopefully ensure health care coverage for millions of less fortunate Americans. Uh, this bill is controversial among the northern ranks of the far-right bloc and is broad support amongst the South and Center. We can still make a few changes necessary before sending to the Senate. A call from Strong Thurman. I'm outraged, George. I'm, I'm incensed. You realize who will stand the most to gain from your Social Security, don't you? Loose women and blacks. We've had an alternate bill which would have allowed states to exercise judgment in how to tailor entitlements according to communities, keeping the lazy and undeserving from getting fat off at the taxpayer's dime. Did you even read it? I can't imagine you did, considering the travesty you're peddling around Congress. You know, I can't figure whether Scoop Jackson is dirt on you or whether you've gone mad. I really can't. You don't, you know darn well that Barry Goldwater plans to run in the next election. If you keep going like this, he'll decimate us. Heck, if you keep going like this, I'll jump ship and vote for Barry. Get it together, George. I'll come around when he's calmed down. Oh, boy. So, yeah. They're extremely unhappy with the lack of segregation stuff. And they hate big government policies, so. But cutting the deal-wise, um, for at least healthcare, 
Yeah, this is the t tough one right here. So that's 10, 16, 23, 50 senators. As long as they all support here, 50 senators. And you only need 50 since we own the Senate right now. 50. So, and Social Security, uh, oh, actually, Social Security is going to go way down. Actually, it went way down, didn't it? Um, let's see. Did it? Yeah, it should have. I guess it did. Yeah, the far right did. Hmm, maybe we should have done the other focuses. And maybe we will. You know, we're here to learn. Let's see. So, that's 8, 20, 26, 37. That's not enough. So, that's 37. Um, get it for Congress. So, it looks like we will probably need to go down this way as well. Um, Segregated Society. We might have to go down that way, maybe. It's not a crisis. Well, let's, let's at least read this first, and maybe we'll go back and do... And fix this up, but some comments clue. Uh, let's see. There's never enough walls. Someone says, I want LBJ come back in TNO. Someone said, I had trouble dealing with South African War II, but I didn't know how to play TNO yet. Someone else asked, how did you get those air cavalry units? That's a good question. Um, so basically, it, it, it came like this, except for those like 20 combo with or 18 combo with instead. I just made them bigger. So they came like this. Engineer companies, signal companies, transports, uh, air assault companies, as well as attack helicopter companies. So that's how it came. Right now, even before we do that, unhappy, they hate what we've done. Um, healthcare reform is still okay, but we haven't done the focus yet. So we don't know about this just yet. Diplomatic Arena. Also, we do have Riley the Party, which would be good. It could slot it into more of our wing, which would be very good to do. Um, we still have stuff up here, of course. Political Landscape. Is there a vote we can do? Let's take a look here. Finalize the act. Let's do that first, and then we'll see what happens. We're now in the process of completing the final draft of a Medicare bill. This bill passed will hopefully ensure health care coverage for millions of less fortunate Americans. The bill is controversial among the northern ranks of the far-right bloc, but it's broad support amongst the south and center. We can still make a few changes necessary before sending it to the Senate. So let's see what happens first. If not, then we're on the line. What are you thinking, George? What you could possibly be thinking? You really want to have working Americans pay for medical help to help uh, to black layabouts now? Really, George? You know, and I know, all the South knows it's not a job of the government to impose ho impoverished, hardworking Americans to fund solutions nonsense like public health care. These are the people who elected you, George, and this is how you pay them back? Where's your sense of decency? The next election comes closer every day and you're serving up to the South on a silver platter for the Democrats. Do you want to lose Goldwater? If you, you, you will if you don't change your tax. So, now we'll see how bad it is. Uh, we can close out this one for now, too. Unhappy, extremely unhappy. So now they've really... health care. Doesn't look like it changed that much. 10, 23, 23. Yeah, it's still 50. Social Security just dropped hard for us, though. But the economy's doing okay still. Not bad. We need 400 billion in surplus, though, but we'll get there. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, uh, someone else. Uh, oh, it was a peace conference, huh? Probably in Russia? <laughs> but another comment was. Who's hyped for Toolbox 33? Oh, yeah, that's sort of Russia. Yeah, I'm excited for it, so we'll see. And then the Senate votes. At long last, it's time for Medicare and Social Security to have their day on the Senate floor. Let the discourse debate and hopefully not filibusters begin. These new laws are critical to the unity of the National Progressive Party. They are humanitarian ventures that will cement our status as a party of the little guy. They're the foundation upon which we'll build our self-help initiatives. They're the populist credentials Walsh and his party will need in the next election. Hopefully, he'll see these on his desk after the Senate vote. Alright, so... Success will cement Walsh's credibility as a bridge-building statesman while failure to damage his reputation for years to come. Alright, so good luck. They actually unhappy. They hate us. Whatever. Um, I'm spending a lot of money. It's all right. So I'll increase. I gotta do that too. Um, where's the vote? I guess we're not voting on it yet. And they're probably going to vote no, so we'll go back, because at the very least, I want to be super successful when we do this. They're also releasing the Moscow, Muscovine, well, it's going to start Muscovine anyways, but whatever. Um, so. so I've been back, blue collar voters, oh yeah, oh, so we go all the way down here first. Who do you work for for yourself? Now that Social Security and Medicare are out of the way, Wallace can turn his attention back to defending freedom on the home front, specifically. It plans to overhaul the American welfare state and replace it with American welfare states. See, federal aid is a federal tyranny. It comes with too many strings attached to become just another way for Washington to force the South to toe the liberal line. President Wallace is going to change that forever. Wallace will begin cons considering a revision of federal welfare laws to give states more control over how welfare funds are allocated. He could either retain some federal funding for states' welfare while giving states more say over how it's spent, or he could cut the strings completely and let states fund their own welfare programs. The latter would be the purest economic expression of his defederalized vision, but many may prove to be a bridge too far for his rural white voters. 
If you want to about this one, please go ahead too. And social security bill fails. And I said, oh, if you want to about this, please go right ahead. So NBC is incompetent, which is not good. So which means we should go back and try to get everything done. And Medicare also fails. So what happened to helping the old and sick? Which does suck. But I wish... It's not like the other bills, which sucks. You know, usually with the bills, you can see, oh, this is how many people are going to vote for this. How many people are going to vote for this? Which we did have, but there's nothing you could do about that. So it looks like we're going to come back down here. But we're going to read these anyways. And if we have to be a little racist for this, I'm okay. Segregated security. Social security isn't just for the retirees, it also includes unemployment benefits as well. They don't lie as a problem. The southern economy thrives on uh, dirt cheap labor performed by black hands. Millions of blacks perform farm labor or domestic help for pittance because they have no other option to feed themselves, especially if they've lost their jobs or elsewhere. But providing them with unemployment benefits and old age pensions could leave them with enough money to refuse taking low wage agricultural domestic work. This could throw the fragile southern social and economic system in disarray. If everyone wants us to guarantee that that won't happen, we just have the plan. We'll exclude farm workers and domestic laborers from Social Security coverage. No work they perform shall entitle them to unemployment benefits or old age pensions, so they'll have no freedom to quit their jobs on a whim and look for a better one. That's what de facto segregates Social Security, since the overwhelming majority of those workers are black. <clears throat> It'll show up support among their Dixie base, but horrify the progressive wing of the party. Thurman's adamantly opposed any social welfare programs that could threaten Southern domestic institutions, and will take as many votes as he can from us if we don't placate him, which we just learned. Our northern adjacents. The far right bloc has always been had two wings Thurman's Dixocrats and old school Patanite neoconservatives. God, neocons. The latter are far more business oriented, so it may take a little convincing in order to get them behind Social Security, but for the sake of the bill, we'll have to try. We'll also meet with the northern uh, right leaders, Margaret Chase Smith and Spiro Agnew, to secure their support for the Social Security bill. By explaining its effects of getting the elderly to retire, he'll show that it'll enable more youth to enter the workforce. We'll make enough money to drive consumer spending. With our entire bloc behind us, passing the bill should be easy peasy. Spend, 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 spend. You want a pension? You got a pension. You lost your job? You ain't losing your house. Wallace is your friend in Washington, and he's here to bail you out of a gym. Name your price and we'll foot the, deal, foot the bill. Give me your poor, your tired, your needy, and we'll get them back on their feet. We'll also offer incredibly generous entitlement payouts in the Social Security bill. The business money of riot leaders in the North will balk with this strong bill and win us so many votes they can eat crow. And asses for allies. Across the aisle, across the country parts of the Democratic Queen, the RDs. They are might more conservative than the liberal Republicans, but they will generally understand the value of social welfare. Might be able to reach out to Goldwater and get him on board with the new legislation, although the Buckeye or Buckley-out Yankee will be a tough fellow to convince. Alternatively, he can reach out to Bob Kennedy and his more progressive-minded Democrats. He despises us for our stance on the civil rights issue, but he's always been a friend of the working man. We're honestly surprised he hasn't affected the center block by now. The progressive wing reacts. It's Henry Jackson, Mr. President. Should I patch him through? Yeah, I'll take a call. President Wall's side deep. There's going to be a difficult conversation. Hello, Henry. How are you? Mr. President, I'm calling you about the Social Security Act. Will you really force states to pay out different benefits according to the particular needs of communities? Do tickets for fools, Mr. President? We both know that's not only an invitation to segregate Social Security programs, it's practically a requirement to. You're going too far, George. I was really hoping Social Security could be a subject we'd see eye to eye on, but the center wing is dead if we support this. I'm sorry to say I'm going to vote against this bill, and that I'll encourage my fellow senators to vote against it as well. This is bad. We'll do it without them, though. A challenge of segregation. If any of you are in doubt that this Social Security bill is an extension of segregation, allow me to read an excerpt from the proposed legislation. There should be no certification for payment to any state unless it is found in the law of such state, approved by the Secretary of Labor under Social Security Act uh, 3, provides provision for 4, tariffs dif differentiated according to the past earnings for individuals, and the particular needs of communities of that state. Ostensibly, this paragraph was added to scale benefits according to profession so that Social Security could be meaningful to high earners without being so generous for low earners, that unemployment would look attractive, but what communities will be judged to have particular needs? In practice, this provides a strong mandate for states to uh, aggregate the Social Security systems based on race. The President can rest assured that we will not take such a blatant attack on the quality of our citizens lying down. We'll take this matter to the Supreme Court, who, who we are certain will find it violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. We'll see him in court. Well, we'll see. We should have it okay for, for us, because... Oh, that's not the one we wanted. Could we give us up here? Slightly conservative, so... It should be alright. But, of course, right now we're currently doing our Northern Adjacents, of course. But I do want to do, as well, uh, the Jobs Act. The American dream has always been that uh, any man can achieve prosperity through hard work and determination. Consequently, we'll never get over our post-war malaise unless we can get our employed, unemployed youth into the workforce. President Wallace wants to get his plan for that. We'll also draft a bill to create the Jobs Corps, a federal program that offers free charge education and vocational training to young people ages 16 to 24. So allow young men and women of low income and good character to get the training they need to pursue a fulfilling career path. From welding to nursing to seamanship, Wallace's Job Corps will allow young down and outs to find the calling in life. Our friends of the North. Also right now, 16, yeah, not too many people there. Um, nothing there, not too much. Healthcare reform, oh, wow, look at that. Social Security, oh, the far right's like, yes, sir. None in the center, though, which is not good. The Republicans are kind of okay with this, though. 
when the Dixocrats and the Republicans can, and the Democrats can all agree on something here. That's kind of weird. So that's that's actually 50. Yeah. 8 plus 8 plus 12 is 20. 50. We've got enough support for now, but we'll see what happens. Republicans and Democrats are okay with segrega segregation. Interesting. Our friends in the North, though. Oh, also, we're going to look at this one, too. Many people across America consider the North and South different parts of the country, even after the Civil War. The culture is different. Different slang words are used. Different traditions of practice are performed. There's a Northern uh, right wing and a Southern right wing. And like two halves of a whole, they need to work together in order to function as one. With President Walsh at the helm of the Southern wing, MCS is a political sign of the Northern uh, right wing. Both are powerful figures in the party. Both of them need to come together to pass Social Security. Ms. Smith, a pleasure to have you in the Oval Office. I'm glad I'll be finally reaching out to the entire party. We're not just a branch of the South, you know. Naturally, George, we're here to get the Social Security Bill passed. Hmm? A shining piece of NPP legislation. Able to help the man in the South or the man in the North. Walsh and Smith got along very well discussing and debating the intricacies of the bill together. <clears throat> what they settled on was a comprehensive compromise. Something every supporter and legislator that a right wing could agree on, of the party. Well, Mr. President, we're set. I'll let, my I'll let my fellow Northern legislators know about these changes, and we'll get it passed. I'm sure of it. Wallace Green and Shook Smith Sand, now North and South, working together for the good of the nation. That's what I like to hear. United as one, nobody will break this bill. So even for the Jobs Act, everyone loves it, except for the Democrats. The center loves it. The far right loves it. The Republicans generally love it, except for the Democrats. But, you know, who cares about them right now? Um, so now, health care reform, they still don't like us, but you know what? Whatever. The verdict. After a stormy session in the U.S. Supreme Court, the constitutional status of Social Security Act has been determined. After a long deliberation with several dissenters, the court has found that... State Social Security laws, like those involved here, that differentiate entitlements based on precisely defined criteria, do not violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, which mandates equal protections under the law, not equal treatment in all cases. Differentiated tariffs, set according to profession, residence, or education status, do not constitute a violation of that right. In short, the Social Security Act is constitutional, and of course it is. The Job Act passes. The Senate just voted in favor of the Jobs Act, granting the Department of Labor the power to establish programs across the U.S. of A. to give unemployed workers and inexperienced youth the chance to work and help build a better nation for all. Urgent to announce the pipeline is pandering and way too expensive. The federal government now has tools to hand tools in hand to directly employ thousands, build new roads, bridges, airports, sewer and water systems, and so much more to reinvigorate America's infrastructure, while slashing the unemployment rate and getting many people with the skills and experience they need. President Walls has already announced that he'll be signing the bill in the Oval Office of tomorrow with invited union leaders and selected members of the public, and will direct the Secretary of Labor to form the task forces to evaluate where in the nation the Jobs Act will provide the most support. While there'll be many smaller scale problems across the nation, the largest could be focused on either the Rust Belt or Northern states due to the sustained economic downturn, or in the perennially struggling South, giving support to those that long needed it. Get those shows on the ground more popular, increase our costs a little bit more, more unemployment, policy effectiveness, and poverty rate will begin to improve. Nice. Not bad overall. That's pretty good. Oh, they're unhappy. They hate us. Whatever. Let's see. Social Security is looking pretty strong right now. Healthcare. Eh. We're still gonna work on it. We're still spend, 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 spend. Now we can do towards a steel belt <clears throat> versus the land of cotton. I kind of want to help out Dixie because the South really doesn't like us right now. But and big business hate this. We've been really pushing big business hard, but they'll still hate us if we do this side too. Um, have a better reputation in the steel belt in the Midwest. Create the CCCs. They can still do this one, as well as do this one, court the center, which is not bad, because <clears throat> they definitely want to do the American dream, but we'll restrict coverage. Burton and Thurman are up in arms about the new Medicare law. They say that if blacks start getting coverage under the program, then hospitals will have every incentive to desegregate and accept the payment. Moreover, they're quite worried that the blacks will start quitting their low-paying jobs in the delicate southern economy, knowing their medical needs will be taken care of by Uncle Sam. Well, hardly needs to assure them that they have nothing to fear. Well, the clauses of the Medicare law exempting retirees who are previously domestic and agricultural laborers from coverage. As these professions are overwhelmingly black, uh, this will drastically reduce the number of black patients' hospitals uh, could conceivably see and also serve to keep those individuals in the cheap workforce. They would adamantly oppose any social welfare programs that could threaten the southern domestic institutions. And will take as many votes as you can from us if you don't placate them. More, 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 more. You want health care? You got health care. Lower cost insurance for elderly? Uninterrupted nursing home care for the chronically ill. Annual cost of living increases for benefits. No running limitations for seniors. Disability benefits too. If you need health insurance, then Dr. Wallace is in. We'll greatly expand the benefits package offered by Medicare. Our budget will take a hit, and the northern right block will cry foul, but by God, the voters will love it. This bill will build a momentum we need going to the next election. Massive increase uh, help its popularity nationwide. A concerned voice. This visit was short notice. Margaret, what's the matter? I'm going to be blunt, Mr. President. I'm looked over to Social Security bill and isn't what we agreed on. In fact, the more I read, the more concerned I became. It's too much, George, with the rates are planted. People can get on by unemployment indefinitely. There'll be no incentive to work. And they'll have to pay for it all. There's no room nor large ease or large gas on the scale, not within our current budget. So that means tax hikes. Big ones. The voters won't stand for that. Heck, your own wing of the party won't stand for it. I don't know even if I can in good faith vote for the bills it stands. Sorry to hear about it, Margaret. It's not so bad. Big business hates us, but. Um, well, what are options here? I encourage you all of them. 
Joss was always ranting and raving about so-called Great Society. Now we ain't stand for any infringements on state sovereignty over the domestic issues, but his healthcare policies may dovetail well with our own. With our own. Maybe we can find an unlucky ally in the Grand Ole Party. We'll reach out across the aisle for a meeting with LBJ and the Liberal Republican leaders. We could offer to make Medicare a bipartisan bill and hopefully secure the support when this uh, bill reaches the Senate floor. Johnson is stubborn as a Texas Longhorn on the integration issue and won't stand for any coverage restrictions. So we'll see what happens. I mean, overall, if I have to go back again and not do some of these focuses, you know, so be it. Whatever. I'm okay with that. Just because I want to make sure we can get everything passed as best we can. But before we take a good look, um, Social Security is looking good, like we said. Healthcare, that's going to take some time and some work. Kiss and butts congressional style. While Social Security has general widespread appeal from both branches of the NPP, a few wavering nodes will almost certainly kill any chance we have to help the good people of our country. As such, the next best strategy is to appeal to arrivals across the aisle. Perhaps some negotiations with major figures in the RDs will push or build a victory. Wallace well, advises thus called meeting and discuss intricacies of gathering RD support. All men in the room agree that a very large majority of Republicans will vote to sink the bill given the specifics of it. So any negotiations with them are hopeless, as such. Any hope of bipartisan support lies with the Democrats, but the room is largely divided on which branch of the Democrats to start appeasing. Half the room would like to approach the larger conservative Senator Barry Goldwater. The right wing of the NPP shares some aspects of social policies with Goldwater, and this could be used as leverage. The garner support from the rather large share of mainstream Democrats, assuming that Goldwater supports the proposal. But Goldwater is very essentially right wing economically, may shoot down any ideas of social security in its entirety. The other half of the room suggests reaching out to RFK, <clears throat> the brother of late President Kennedy. While RFK's progressive Democrats are a smaller caucus in Goldwater's, RFK will surely listen to our proposal given his social democratic leanings, and it's more likely to bring in his caucus behind him. However, this also means he'll oppose any overt segregationist clauses in our bills. The final decision after this discussion rests with the president. Goldwater's are man. Several but equal nonsense. We gotta go with Goldwater. All back in federalism hurt. President Wallace enjoyed flipping through the channels of the TV, each describing the life of Americans throughout the country in one way or another. Plus, got him some time away from the stack of papers on his desk. But, as he was flipping through, he realized that a particular news shot had been that had been on earlier than possible, and with a face he didn't quite enjoy seeing it at any time of the day. Good evening, my name is Howard Rog with NBC Nightly News. He was Senator Barry Goldwater representing the Democrats from within the RD party. No, he called and saying that you have some reg words regarding President Wallace, correct? <clears throat> oh boy, another news hour for Goldwater to have a tantrum on national TV, what a joy! Wallace well, thought as he watched the Arizonan Senator. Good evening, Howard, and all my fellow Americans, you won't, you'd be correct, Mr. President, as it has grown more evident with the passing day. That the president's wandering dangerously further or farther from his party's goal with every passing day, Goldwater said. And how's that? Senator Goldwater Rog responded. <clears throat> well, you see, Howard, President Wallace came into the presidency promising to champion the ideas of conservative American mind as he stated within his speech in Ohio. However, he has turned his, this idea on his head and is expanding on the federal government further than it already was. New policies and regulations slither from the federal government in an effort to further the Wallace administration. And while it's not as bad as what could be possible from the National Progressive Party, it's still a considerable threat to the people of the United States' freedoms and liberties, economically, socially, and politically. Mark my words, Howard, the proclamations of Wallace ought to serve as a warning to conservative Americans. President Wallace shut out the TV set. If Barry Goldwater wanted to sit up on national television and spout warnings of doom and gloom to Americans, then let him. He hasn't heard on the presidency yet, and he won't in the future. Line up, huh, Barry? We gotta have a meeting. As we're going to begin restricting coverage, I'll go down this way and we'll do both these again together. But heck, or high water Goldwater today. President Wallace met is, is met is to meet with Senator Goldwater. Discuss gathering Democrat support for Wallace's Social Security bill proposal. Goldwater is likely a man with presidential ambitions and as such is likely to play hardball. With this in mind, Wallace held calmly and entered the room in which Goldwater is waiting for him in the White House. Good to see you, Goldwater. The two would shake hands, smiling warmly. Wallace sits down across from Goldwater, and the two began to ch chat and intimately discussing the bill specifics. While well, the beginning of the proposal went rather well, Goldwater's enthusiasm dampened as Wallace kept talking. Mainly, Goldwater became more and more opposed about the very foundations of the bill rather than specific clauses they were discussing. President Wallace, you're telling me that you want to reward the unemployed in this country. Why should we support this deceitfully lazy? What about the unnecessary disability insurance and accessibility clauses? Do you know how much money we would squander on a very small minority in the country? Wallace was becoming increasingly less confident that Goldwater would support the very core of the bill as it was. Now, now, I assure you that the programs like this will stop the poor and needy in America from turning to socialism. But, Mr. President, this bill is socialism. We need to cut down on unnecessary spending and work on repaying our national debt. Barry, do not believe in the amount of productivity this will give the average American. Well, I'll do more for our economy than a surplus will. Goldwater immediately stood up. I'm not going to support a communist bill run by communists himself. Good luck, President Walls. And with Goldwater walking out of the room, any hopes of a bipartisan support were swiftly dashed. Darn it, it's the best defense against com communism that we have. I think I read this one yesterday, too, so we might do this as well, but we'll see. We'll definitely see. Humphrey on the line. Hup Hubert, Humphrey on the line, Mr. President. I'll take it in my office. How are you, Hubert? Concerned, Mr. President. Very concerned. We need to have a conversation about the health care bill. Can't possibly expect us back in its current form. Providing a decent standard of health care to all should be a way to unite Americans. But your bill of blacks dying in the streets of illnesses that a white hospital could have saved them from. Besides the of letting of your own people, your own citizens, our own citizens, suffer that mistreatment, do you really think it's good to calm racial tensions? 
You think he's going to? I'm convinced that this healthcare plan will do more than harm than good to the country. I think we both know it will wreak havoc on the unity of the party. President, the Senate won't vote for it. We can if we want to keep our support. We'll pass it without him then. Because right now, while we're still supporting the cent uh, Central Africa, just Africa in general, so we lost all the Senate support. Healthcare reform 35, 40, 47. So we lost all sen uh, center. So if we focus on the far right, we should be okay. Or the far right of the northern group, or whatever. More, 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 more. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, we'll see. We might be able to get a few more Republicans. If we get like three more Republicans, that's all that really matters. So, actually, you know what? Eh, that's not really worth it. But we have fifteen hundred political power anyway, right now. Um, let's take a look. See, I don't like. Actually, let's do this one because it get more war support. I mean, it's not that important, but you know, slightly more uh, command power maybe. And they'll be more folded into our faction of the uh, right wing, which I don't know, there's been discussion saying you know, like. Should we really consider far right? Why would you call yourself far right? I mean, maybe some people will, but like, why? I gotta do that one. Um, send guns. Why not? We're very invested in this group here, but yeah, a little concerned about this, but whatever. Encourage the elephants, of course. We gotta work with LBJ, and we'll do these, like I said. And foreign businesses will be good to do. And I want to get this one done as well. This is a family of states. Increase <clears throat> the federalization, which is fine. Funding for schools. Cut education funds, lowered funding for black schools. Uh, we'll see. We'll definitely see. But I want to read this one first before going any further. Senate votes, of course. I had this one earlier in this episode, so if you want to read this again, please go ahead. But still. There's a steel belt national campaign. Atlanta Cotton. Up in Dixie. More GDP for quite a few states. Segregated jobs core. Question by the court, but no one cares. Um, big business will hate it once. The South loves Wallace, but Johnson treatment. White House is in a roar today. There's a bill, bull charging through it, putting, pushing aside any attempts to stop him. Unfortunately, that bull goes by the name of LBJ, or Lyndon Baines Johnson. You dare expect me to support your racist piece of crap bill with some sweet talk about common man? Bless your soul, you got a lot of nerve pushing this now. Come on now, Lyndon. When the MPP passes this bill, it's going to look really bad for you already, folk. A part of the vote to kill Medicare splashed across every paper. What do you think about that? Do you really want your legacy serving this great country to be tarnished by you being a stubborn hooligan? Johnson at the moment hadn't had enough. Uh, and if it rage, she stopped his tracks in the White House and turned to meet Walsh eye to eye. Yes, now, piss off, Mr. President. I've got a country to salvage from racist craps like you. As soon as Johnson exited the White House with a slam of the door, Wallace sighed. Whatever the man was about to do, it wouldn't be good for the survival of the bill. He really lives up to his name, don't he? Mm, and we're going to go give him guns. We have immense support for there, which is fine, whatever. Don't really care. And we lost all Republicans there, too. So basically, what you don't want to do is more, 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 maybe. Our restricted coverage is okay. So we'll see. Um, so right now we don't have enough support really for that d decimates support here social security is fine now which is good well I think we'll have to work on this a little bit more finalize the acts we're basically doing all these probably isn't the best idea but we'll see in a little bit as we'll do foreign businesses and stuff like that uh, segregate the curricula alienate the CNPP which kind of sucks uh, funding for schools Skeets authority, pass a bill and a law, increase states are lying on stuff. So we'll Security see. in progress. President George C. Wallace had been idling at his desk for a few minutes, taking a break from his work when he had a stark realization that as the TV played in the background. He hadn't heard news of a civil rights protest in days. That's when after so long the president began to add up all the recent events and phone calls that had been pouring in. Consistently. After the showdown in Tuscaloosa just a few days prior, Wallace had heard a variety of phone calls from his far right constituents within the Senate. Now more than ever, one of the more powerful right senators said over the phone, the people are calling in my office happily. All of them feel empowered, knowing that they have the right to shut the uh, certain people out of the businesses and schools. I know it must have been heck, President Wallace, but you sure gave him some of that heck to give us, get us where we are now. Thank you. Wallace happily grinned and reminding himself of his praise, knowing that he had done the done as the true patriots of America had wanted all along. That's when Wallace thought of an idea. He gathered Lorene and got his driver to bring them around the local D.C. area to check out the sights on this beautiful day. And a beautiful day it was in Wallace's mind. As more he looked around, the more he saw the signs of no blacks allowed, whites only, and his personal favorite one he saw, Afros go down the street. Even as he watched the streets, he knew that the United States was made white, in his image, as he had wanted it to be. All the while, Lorene happily sat in the car beside her husband lovingly. On the way back to the White House, the President's vehicle stopped at a red light. That's when Wallace got a good look at the other side of town down a large boulevard when he saw black citizens roaming the streets, in tattered clothes and dilapidated buildings, shut out from the industrious, Wallace, uh, industrious city Wallace had just seen. And that's why when the car began to move forward, Wallace never happened to see that side of town. That should be, right, Lorene? But a whopping interrupted. 
George Wallace looked old and ragged seated on his couch in the Oval Office. He spent the day running across Washington, shaking hands with congressmen and shouting himself hoarse about law and order. He and his exhausted aides had scrambled back to the White House moments ago for some photo op with the chamber, only to be ambushed by an analysis from the agency with a devastating briefing on the situation in West Africa. Washington's delicate peace had collapsed, another war broken out, there were the top secret images of the Japanese vessels in Cameroonian ports. Wallace sat with his head in his hands for a long time before speaking, one of the gosh darn, he just shook his head. These gosh darn Africans, they're gosh darn French, uncivilized. The briefer said nothing, shifting his weight from one foot to the next as the president trailed off. He learned not to interrupt the president in one of his dark moods. The president kept his face buried in his hands. They'll blame me for this mess, you know. They'll say Wallace wasn't a serious president, that he just called the place a rat hole and left America without an ally. Stupid, weak, always so weak, he muttered more to himself than anyone. Gosh darn Africans. The analysis gave the president a moment before speaking. We have prepared some options for you to review, Mr. President, including a blockade of the Gulf of Guinea to cut off our adversaries. The president lifted his head and stared off into space. Yeah, that's the way forward. What well, a short strength, preserve America's presence. It's the only way. He stood up, resembling his usual mask of confidence. Leave the briefing papers on the desk and wait outside. As soon as I'm done with this chamber, I'll need to know what assets we have already. He straightened his tie and locked his eyes with the other man. We'll not lose the gosh darn cold war over this, as you wish, sir. Um, so we'll see what happens. Secure the Gulf Coast, of course. Our immediate most important priority in the West African conflict is the United support of the PALF, which is currently most, mostly being delivered through a maritime route via the Gulf of Guinea into Cameroonian ports. Well, I don't want to directly intervene in the conflict yet and risk an escalation. We can trust that our free French allies can, with their significant naval forces, block off this route. We provide enough support to them. The Gulf of Guinea campaign is currently going on in nobody's favor. If completed, they'll retain the supply line. Uh, when completed, sphere A to the PALF will be significantly more difficult. Um, cool. So we can do a whole lot of options here. Increase our advantage in the Gulf. Significantly escalate, provide naval intelligence. Increase our advantage, harass convoys. Train naval bombers. Largely increases, escalate military shipments. Larger shipments. Silent Sitatunga. Interesting. Swell the French Foreign Legion. That's not bad to do. Send the Flying Roosters. Military advisors. Ooh, that's not bad too for them. Oil shipments, of course. Infantry shipments, ground shipments, scars heal. Discontent with the world fall. Um, large increase advantage. Sabotage and build up of ports. Let's do that one. And. Without escalating it too much, right? We don't escalate things too much. As we're still in Africa, Central Africa, so Central Southern ish. Larger stuff. Swell the Legion. Let's go do that one too. I'll give them some planes because that'll be good as well. And we've only 20 more uh, command power, which sucks, but whatever. Um, harass convoys. Go do that too. Nah, do that one as well. We'll escalate things. Who cares, right? As uh, we're still over here and we have max investments. Hopefully this will pay off eventually. Good lord, I hope it does. But we're doing Canadian business because at this point, um, I'm not sure what to do. Because, you know, if we come down to the bottom, we don't have enough support to pass healthcare. Now, if we get the next election, then potentially we could get healthcare and social security both passed. No guarantees. So I'm going to wait to do this until maybe the next election. And that and also determine what which route we go with this as well. So we'll have to wait for this. I and mean, that's why we have a second term here anyways. Um, we will probably slowly push through this part of the tree as well. We'll see. Um, Canadian business. Well, business transactions with strangers work fine enough. Business transactions with friends have the added benefit of lasting far longer. And there's no better example of a friend to America than our neighbor Canada. We always enjoyed warm trade relations with the great wide north, much to the displeasure of the late British Empire. Canadian oil and precious metals freely cross along a shared land border and earth on a regular basis and return American cars, heavy equipment, and foodstuffs that are unloaded daily in the busy docks of Quebec, Toronto, and Vancouver. Uh, ours is a relationship that spans 100 years and hundreds of millions of dollars, ultimately contributing to the prosperity of everyone involved. Through through increases in our exports to and imports from Canada, we can strengthen ties, these ties enough to last at least another generation. Australasian business. With the fall of China, the French Indochina, China, and the Southeast Asian colonies, America's once dominating sway over the most populous region on Earth came on to the end. From Beijing to Bat Bat Batavia, American investments, trade agreements, loans, uh, company shares, overseas branches were written off or dissolved against our will. Until the millions of that lasted generations, testaments were nation's economic and financial prowess swept away by a horde of Japs in a little more than four years. But Uncle Sam is far from out, broken and bruised, but yes, never out. Well, Hong Kong but kowtowed to Japanese abatus, can't bear closing an entire continent shut from them. While well, Japan's new puppets expelled our businesses and our businessmen, Sydney offered them safe harbor. While all, while all of Asia turned to the yen, Australia alone kept true to the dollar. Twelve million is a far cry from one billion to whom we used to sell, but that never remained loyal customers when everyone else jumped ship. Ever to establish America's presence in the Asia Pacific, fostering better trade relations with our allied down under is the best place to start. 
um, a bearing business. Among the triumvirate, a beer is easily the closest to the U.S. A chink in the otherwise firm grips Germany and Italy they have on the markets of Europe. Easy access to American lines of credits helped keep the country's economy solvent, if barely, following the construction of the Gibraltar Dam and its repercussions. Additionally, recent tensions with its ostensible allies meant that Liberian businessmen were gradually shifting their eyes away from the Inter-Mediterranean and towards the Transatlantic. Our economic advisors that now believe that now is the perfect time to expand the reach of American trade into Iberia and consequently, Southern Europe. A trade agreement here, some words of encouragement there, and soon enough our companies will be making Iberian pesos hand over fist. I'll concord that with uh, Canada. Full of Bride and Wallace, Wallace once again were busy negotiating the terms and propositions of yet another treatise to be delivered to foreign powers. Uh, quite relaxed due to the subject matter in question. The U.S. economy relied on the oil which fueled cars, factories, and businesses, and if it was oil needed, why not get it from a close ally for a good price? To Prime Minister Douglas Doyle, the great Canadian people, the government of Canada, Canadian people and the federal government of the United States have a unity that's unlike ever seen across the globe. From fighting the trench against the Germans in France during the First World War, to the defense of British Isles led by American and Canadian men, the braveness of the and gallantry of our people have shaped the modern understanding of North America. However, once more, as the collapse of alliances failed the world against the Germans and Japanese, one more, once more does the lack of unity threaten us against all the coercions of the Japanese of the Pacific. And the organization of free nations will not fall in the face of evil. Thus, we shall organize an immediate increase in the importation of Canadian oil by 175% in order to benefit the American civilian and military economies, while helping to shape the petroleum industry within the Canadian economy. While the drastic nature of the upscale importation may seem Russian and immediate, it is within the best interest of both of our countries, and our liberties to do so, under the threat of the Japanese army naval force as it grows throughout the Pacific, the U.S. shall begin preparing uh, pre preparations immediately to see the petroleum offered by the wonderful people of Canada in such a, uh, such a time of strife and fear. With great thanks to the government and people of Canada, George C. Wallace, President of the United States. The day after Canada's ratification of the trade proposal, J. William Fulbright once more approached President Wallace. Wallace looked confused as why Secretary Fulbright approached him. Until he offered the President a thumbs up and request for orders, give him heck, George. Give him heck. Get more unified, legacy subsidies, increase their costs, but I'm honestly not worried about costs. I mean, we have a year surplus of 12 billion. Growth is doing great. Love it. Also, we did military austerity earlier. Didn't hurt our growth, so we might as well do it again. I mean, military, we're not really escalating anything right now, so we'll wait. Tap, tap, tap the tax cut as well. What did I do? Oh, I did that to suppress Republicans and whatnot, so we'll see. I don't know. I just... I might have to seriously replay this again, just so we can get enough support. Or I'll just use constant commands. I don't know. We'll see. I want to do it as fairly as possible, though. That's my thing. What's that? We're looking. Free France. Free France. Well, actually... I don't know. We'll see. I, I want to send volunteers, but... Yeah. Frontline consolidation. So military advisors might be the one we want to do as well. So we'll see. I've been business, uh, which would be a good, good thing to do. An alliance with Australia. President Walls, J. William Fulbright, and a team of diplomats that assembled together to scrutinize a piece of international trade legislation that had been developed by the President and the Secretary. Every line had to be right here to show that the delivery of the message would also echo the same message throughout the Pacific to any who dared call the members of the Organization of Free Nations foes. To Prime Minister Harold Holt of the Commonwealth of Australia. It is with the utmost importance that we secure a trade deal. Uh, trade connection within the free markets of both the U.S. of A. as well as the Commonwealth of America, or uh, Commonwealth of Australia, in order to maintain a safe and prosperous future for Australians and Americans alike together. Our people suffered the sins committed by the Japanese forces across the Pacific, with the blood of our compatriots falling into the chronicles of history, soiling in the palms of Japanese soldiers and officers. It's great, uh, with great honor that we not only wish to guarantee such a trade agreement with the Australian government, for the sake of the horrors of the past, but also in order to lay the foundation of a greater more secure future for our nations, economies, in conjunction with one another. The Federal Department of State has reviewed the prospects of the Australian continent and found a variety of wonders opportunities available to connect the two of our countries into a sense of brotherhood in an already brightened future. Uh, thus, it is my honor to announce a new opening of the American market towards Australian goods. Most specifically, the American government is seeking to increase the purchase of Australian steel and steel-related goods by tenfold current estimates. Thus, Australian markets would flourish with the influx of American investments into the Commonwealth economy, while the U.S. can both direct the steel to American production in military sectors as well as introductions to the private sector of American businesses. Only together, along with the entirety of the Organization of Free Nations, may we prosper against a future shielded from the Empire of Japan's encroachments. With many thanks and cheers to the Australian Commonwealth and people, George C. Wallace, President of the United States. Australia promptly accepted the terms under Wallace's treaty, prompting outrage from the wording of the letter from Japanese diplomats. Tough crap. More cost? Whatever. Deregulate DC. Now this is going to hurt us in the northern states, so it might diminish the far right in the north, but that might give us maybe some more potential hours to work with the Republicans and or Senator or Democrats, but might, maybe not. But this will anger big business, but empower unions too. 
They regulate DC. Regulations, regulations, regulations. They come in many shapes and sizes, different names for different people, like liberals and pinkos call them environmental protection and workers' rights. Nazis call them efficient redistribution of the fear is money. But rational men see past the smoke and mirrors and found mounds of red tape ready to choke the lights out of anyone who dares to found their own business. Become their own masters. Like loyal mutts, they follow the feds wherever they go, ruining the lives of, of many an honest entrepreneur at home. And many an honest entrepreneur from abroad. See, right now, America needs every last dollar it can get to survive the next decade. Dollars to build roads and bridges. Dollars to pay our men and buy our guns. Dollars to grow wheat in the plains and feed the American people. Right outside our borders is a whole mound of crash, or cash, ready to flow like a man straight into the Mer America's balance sheet. Building all the roads, bridges, farms, and factories we want. All we need to do is loosen up a little, nothing too harmful, uh, just some minor readjustments here and there, and all that capital will be ours for the taking. Simple stuff, right? Glad you agree. Grow more unified, the local in the northern states, but unions makes us strong. Um, we'll talk about Iberia next too. Anything here? A union within with the union. Um, Border Guinea is kind of in our favor, which is good. Um, Secretary of State J.W. Fulbright and President Wallace has been in the Oval Office for the Sunrise of Sunset. sunset. However, one of the key steps in revolutionizing American trade policy to prevent Japanese dominance was forming. And the two were planning on diving into the belly of the beast to do it as they sent forward the official statement. The Caldillos of the Iberian Union, rightful rulers of the Portuguese and Spanish men alike. Uh, with regards to handling the foreign trade policy, the United States of America is seeking to emphasize the protection of interest for itself and for nations throughout the world. That's why the Department of State has decided to approach both of you in proposing an alliance of trade security between the two of our nations. While the Germans have continuously impacted the state of the Union's economy, the Japanese regularly tear down our economic securities. Let's prompt the following plan drafted by the most brilliant trade analysis the U.S. has to offer. In addition for the growth and spur of American-based businesses in, into the Iberian Union to stimulate economic resources from metropolitan and suburban areas, the United States will officially work to, escal to scale the importation of raw steel materials from the Iberian Union by 150%. So we'll offer a raw financial boost towards the Iberian economy in exchange, the United States hopes for the Caldeas to downscale the ongoing trade relations with the Empire of Japan, to secure a more positive economic outlook for Iberians and Americans alike. With complete respect and honor towards your rule, George C. Walls, President of the United States. In the days following the securing of the trade alliance with Salazar and Franco, the RDs, especially that of Barry Goldwater, have torn to President Walls for daring to associate Americans with the likes of the fascist dictatorships. However, President Walls thought they didn't like the first holiday in building the coast of Barcelona, did they? They didn't get the first, yeah. No one likes to listen to Walls, huh? So be it. Pacific Trade Zone. Union makes us strong. Empower unions. But this will please voter, the voter base, which is something I really want us to do. The unions make us strong. Workers unions are organizations protecting the average American worker from the overreaching acts and breaches of justice committed by American companies in the past. The media come to support the mandates of such unions and their protections for the American worker. Well, large companies have come into conflict with such organizations time and time again. Although these companies are large forces in the U.S. society, it is without question that the strength of the American blue-collar worker can come as a blazing force in American politics. Thus, as the administration's duty, even if it may restrict the economy, to capitalize on the support of such unions in some form of legislation, as Southern workers will appreciate the concern given to them by the government, while liberal-minded RDs will begin to appreciate our work. Some call unions a new revolution in social policy, some call them a restriction on the American market, but the administration likes to call them votes. Over here, anything here? Nope, we're good. Hopefully that'll be settled soon. Let's get more political power, even though we already have almost 1,500, so. So they hate us, and they're extremely unhappy with lack of segregation. We're leading to a support base, fleeing the Democrats and extremists, but unifying our party. Hates big government policies, so the center hates us anyways, but whatever. Favors big business. Whatever. It is what it is for now. That's why I want to wait and see what the next is gonna be like. Because technically we've only had the midterms. I'm assuming Oh, oh, campaign successful. That we'll do okay in the elections. Uh get another term for George C. Wallace when we're really gonna pull out all the stops if we can. But uh, military reports, along with the confirmation from our allies, have confirmed that the campaign in the Gulf of Guinea has been uh, a complete success. And our Navy secured control of the region, with the Gulf blockaded. And now, obviously, significantly more difficult for Japan to support the PALF, and now it's nearly free reign, free reign to support our allies. Significant victory, not simply for America, but for all the OFN democracy. Soon we shall hopefully bring this conflict to a peaceful end. Time to finish the job. If you're wondering about Red Twilight, please go right ahead, too. We live in a charge fancy, don't we? Scar is heal. Send military advisors. Go ahead. Yeah, go and see if we can send equipment. Eh, it takes five command bar to crap. Uh, how we doing over? How we doing over here? They're doing okay. Cameroon's still pretty thick though. Uh, how it all starts on all the stations. It was static for a moment. It's TV. Uh, uh, search for the next station, only for another image to appear. Once more, of a bombed out village in free French territory, displayed in all of its smoking, blood so glorious a flag of Cameroon flew in the distance. Can't get any news if it's not coming out of West Africa. I don't get why they bother with it so much. How it entered the room with a bowl of stew and a disquieted expression to turn to sit on the couch. 
His wife, Judith, was fiddle, still fiddling with the knobs on the TV before she gave up and joined him. He gestured idly with a spoon towards the TV as it displayed a glamour shot of the three French bombardment. We've no truck with this one, it ain't even French. The cameras are fine, with just a bunch of lost soldiers in Africa. People are worried, uh, Howard, and we all know what happened last time fighting started up in Africa. Folks want to know if we're going to go win round two. Judith pointed out before retrieving a bowl in her own stew. Those were the Nazis, Judith. No one has a problem with killing Nazis. Howard's opened his mouth to continue, but Judith interjected again. Except for Lionel, you know, down the street. There's a lot of problems with killing Nazis when that whole thing started. Howard sighed, yeah, except for Lionel. Point is, whatever that pipe became, it started out in a good place, you know. Protecting the free world, stopping the German advances. That's the whole thing. This, though, this is a terrible territory squabble. Ain't stopping Washington, huh? And I hear they're going to be sending advisors, Judith remarked. Uh, drew a raised eyebrow from Howard, and yeah, to the French. They weren't even French, so. Howard grumbled as he pinched the bridge of his nose. Seeing like so many other Americans like him, had a very bad feeling about this one. So he, like many other Americans like him, kept their eyeballs glued to the TV set. The nation holds their breath in anticipation. Nice. Mm. Frontline consolidation. We have immense investment, but like, when's it going to pay off? It does pay off, I think, eventually, but I'm just not sure when. And political landscape, I mean, we're still ready, united for everything, so, or anything. We have the highest level we can possibly get, too. Unions make us strong. All right, so we're going to pass a bill. Uh, Republicans say no. The far right are pretty mixed. The center loves it. Democrats hate it. So now we have 53 support, so we're pretty good on that. Good job, guys. Good job. Uh, yeah. Made in America. Now, from my understanding, this plant covers 8 million square feet of space, roughly over 300 squares or acres of prime Alabama soil. That means it took hundreds of thousands of tons of concrete to build concrete made from, with cement from the busy ports of Oregon. Inside, we have the latest, most cutting-edge heavy machinery straight out of Pennsylvania and Ohio to make the mightiest metal steeds ever put to the winding asphalt pastures of our great state, each stand with tiny imprints of the stars and stripes of very own steel quality. Built with the finest steel from the gigantic ironworks of Indiana, this auto factory now houses over 3,000 workers, four men, and managers. If you learn about this, please go ahead. Now I'm going to try to help elect the MPP. Presidential set election season has begun. I might have to do comms commands to see what we're going to do for trying to get everything passed and whatnot. So, oh, it's a toss up. That's not good. Showing a toss up. Oh, we might lose the South. If we lose the Deep South, I showed almost fierce. Well, that would not be very good for our. Uh, Huh, healthcare reform. We don't help all this either. But we'll see. I'm probably going to replay this off screen, anyways. How bad can federalism hurt? Oh boy. Um, I, I've read this one earlier, actually. So there's that. The shadow, shadow down most fears. President Wallace's eyes have been glued to the TV set in anticipation for the next events unfolding in his home state of Alabama. Next to him, Bird. I've been on the phone all morning coordinating what could mount up to be a disaster for the president. Only time I could tell. Uh, for the two men as if they were about to bear witness of a bloodbath or a victory. That morning, a group of 45 black students departed from Druid High School, the black high school for the Tuscaloosa school zone, to march through the gates of Tuscaloosa High School, demanding to leave Druid as it emphasized the teaching of manual skills rather than the promising a path to a university-based education like Tuscaloosa High School I did, a segregated school for only whites. Now, President Wallace stroked his chin as he watched the stand-up between the federal soldiers guarding the gates of the segregated schools and the protesters. The gates were shut, their officers were lowered, and each second ticked by while the possibility of a slaughter grew. Well, the occasion gave off a single chant, the group of students were silent for the most part with all, uh, acting as if entering Tuscaloosa High School was a right, contrasting from the law. Stupid effing kids, they need to get back home. We don't need this right now, Wall said, slamming the Oval Office desk with his fist. The protesters aren't trying to fight anybody. They've calmly approached the guard, asking to it'll be let in. Bert said, I don't give a flying crap what those kids want. The law is a law of segregation and segregation. They are not allowed to set foot in that school's courtyard. Bird, the president shouted at his national security advisor. Soldiers stood resolute in the face of the wall of protesters which had formed. Meanwhile, a large crowd of white adults began flanking the 45 students, shouting at them, demanding they move on. Finally, after a blood-curling hour of anxiety, Wallace felt relief as a leader of the protesters backed down and walked the group back down to Jewett High School. Local and federal authorities were investigating the matter and the students involved. Meanwhile, the president poured drinks to offer cheer to Bird, with whom he said segregation stands strong before down on the liquor. Thank God that's over. Bye, Americans. We don't really need to do that one. This one's going to make our deeds look better, so we don't want to do that one. Welcome to America would not be bad either. Um, increase our influence there is okay. Perth Conference, Wall of Dollars. Uh, Banana Republics would be more friendly with us, but is that really going to help us out right now? No, it's not. So, uh, I'm thinking we might have to do Lanacon. Help Dixie out a whole bunch. Big Misses will hate this, which is fine. Hurrah, hurrah. The South will love us. Or we can come down this way. This is a family of states because right now they hate us. Our own voter base hates us a lot. They're extremely unhappy and they hate big government policies. So, lack of segregation legislation leading to a support base in the South that fleeted Democrats and stuff. 
like that. But we need as much far right as possible, really. So I'm not going to segregate the curricula for now. So look a little worse than the northern states. Alienate the center, which we already kind of already did, actually. Center, center. So they're not even supporting us anyways. So I could get the curricula. Core voters will love this. Put it lightly. Put God back in schools. So increase your support to the south. Such so a shameless pattern to your elector to keep it going. The Yankee school rant. Roll back segregation rhetoric. Um, we could try this one. We could do the family states too. The U.S. is their home. Like many homes, it's home to a family. Each member is unique and has their own agendas and systems of belief, but they should all ultimately work together to keep the household running. Those members sometimes argue, and that's okay, because what family is perfect? What's not okay for the head of the household to beat down anyone who doesn't like what they're doing? That's the situation with the states and the federal government, who tell the states that they can't do the things they want because if some man in Washington thought it was unfair. President Wallace intends to present this argument to the American people. Just because some states think like segregation are wrong does not mean others can't stand differently. So we'll see what happens. Um, we'll be fine with this for now too. So, oh, oh, okay. So now it's looking like a safe MPP victory. So this one, the top one here, is for um, what? I'm going to race. Is this for senators? Yeah, the Deep South is going to be a definite toss-up. AWUCA organized success in Congress. The fight. Between uh, laborers and labor organizers within the economy of America has become one of the largest, greatest political feuds of modern history. With historical figures from the socialistic Marx to the lives of fair propositions of the conservative movements making make in statements on how the relationship ought to function. Some have answered this call with workers' unions, protecting workers from labor organizers, however, where conservatives would typically fight tooth and nail against such labor movements. President Wallace is a sidestep and the heart of the party, and forwarded the American Workers' Union Consolidation Act, or AWUCA, through the Senate, which has successfully been passed, introducing harsher fines for construction companies for violating union agreements. Once more, <coughs> uh, such a powerful act is brought together about another about a divide. However, those within the party and the executive branch have offered the widest celebrations for Awuka's successes. Several reports of meetings between the leaders of the National Progressive Party, including President Wallace representing the far right, organizing successful celebrations and discussions on where to go from here. We don't want to split this country apart. We don't want to split Americans apart. All we want is a truer, better economy and country. How could we potentially see that foster such God-given glory if you true patriots don't come together for once against those who seek to tear us down? Said President Wallace in a brief meeting with the press. However, in recognizing the president's uncharacteristic choice to side with the workers and laborers across the country, some have chosen to express their satisfaction with the president's work, rather than coming together for joy. In particular, fringe members of the far right have organized several rallies protesting the Wallace administration's actions. In several major cities across the Deep South, several burning banners and rallying cries adorn a speech against the president. With one southern leader saying, President Wallace may be a man of this country, he may be a man of his people, and by God, grant his good Christian God, and of his God. However, we cannot stand by and allowing the power of this country to be toppled by socialists and fearmongers. The party comes together on this one, boys. Big business does not like this. And gets more voters. But, increased state's authority. While the state governments have many rights uh, within their borders, there are some things that they have to wait until some pencil push in Washington tells them that they're allowed to do. And in the time the bureaucracy takes to churn out, its permission slips, the opportunity to act passes. We've got to cut the red tape and allow the states to act on their own initiative. It'll make their job easier. It'll make our job easier. It'll make those loud mouth losers on the street's job, or lack thereof, a heck of a lot harder. Ooh, we're going to lose a far right in the Kentucky. Yeah, it looks like when this deep south, we're going to lose a lot of things here. But we'll see. Extremely unhappy, they hate us. We have a balance. Okay, so now, we, instead of big business, we've become a balance of workers and the businessmen. Steel mill? Unions forever, unions never? Oh, West Africa uh, escalates. The president appeared to sign the order which would commit American forces to West Africa. This is a necessary decision, of course. One which have been ultimately inevitable as the reports have come in describing the continued escalation of the conflict. Provocation and retaliation over and over to the point where the cabinet, the military, and the president were certain that if they did not act, then others would. They could not afford for one side to gain an irreversible advantage unless it was their own, of course. Congress have provided authorities authorization for their operation. Framed as a defensive measure, that in theory was intended to merely allow the American force to protect their allies. In reality, everyone knew what that meant. That was a dedicated intervention, and one that the president hoped that the majority of the republic would be prepared to support. No one wanted to think what would happen if the victory wasn't achieved relatively quickly, or the public backlash went swift, or was swift. There's another element that I need to be considered as well, namely how the Japanese would respond, of course. Uh, given that they were likely watching America and would proportionally respond, many expected that Japan would soon follow suit and connect their own intervention in Africa once more. Japanese and American soldiers would meet on the field of battle, but we can only hope they would remain confined to West Africa. May the best way nation win. Oh, you can immensely escalate. Nice. There you go. They're still maxed out, so they should actually be done soon. Relatively soon-ish. Or maybe never. Maybe it's just never going to be done. 
Um, well, how many guys can we send? Two, three. Not bad. I think I do a lot of this off screen as well. Steel mill in Ohio. Um, another day, another dollar. Oh, hey, all these steel mills spent hours turning out steel to be using cars, construction, military equipment, shipbuilding, and more. Each and every one of them staffed by hardworking men and women, working tirelessly to make ends meet. Most of them are a union, and today, plenty of them are furious. News spread quickly when President Wallace passed a law, uh, a slew of business deregulation. Some changes came slowly, some came quickly. Suddenly, factories don't need to adhere to as much safety regulations anymore. Old Johnny Regis burned his foot because clothing safety regulations got scaled back. Corporate didn't want to maintain expensive safety suits anymore. The fire extinguisher didn't work. Might as well bring out the old ones to save money, right? Payroll complaints went from being solved in minutes to taking days. A lot of the new hires must miss out on old conveniences and measures we had under regulation, all in the name of saving money. Members of the Steelworks Union are currently gathered outside their mill, smoking cigarettes and engaging in their complaints. The MPP claims to be the party of the worker, but they're letting injustices like to slide. Wallace claims to be a populist man for the people, but the big corps slew him a few donations and he shuts his mouth. They consider it long and hard striking, but loosening on strike breaking holds them back. With dismay, they quash their cigarettes and go into the cars or the bus station. If this is life at work from now on, it's not going to be easy. Unions forever to unions never? Hey, we'll see. Increased states authorization, states police over federal. Nice, we're there. Yeah, we'll see. Without the center, like, I, I don't know if there's any other options for this, because with this, without more, 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 as well as encourage the elephant, it's, it's really bad for us. Like, I wish we had, like, there's another way we could do things here, but we cannot. So, where are we at? I guess we'll try to focus on these guys first. <coughs> Take Niami. Niamai. How are we doing here? 13 billion still. It's still good. Of course, we didn't do that one too. My bad. Oh, well. GDP still not bad. We have a ton of political power, though. What are we supposed to do with this? Business subsidies. Unemployment reform costs. No issue. Really, no issue. Answer to Atlanta. Wallace had another difficult day of fighting his enemies and his allies, and with the sun already set, he figured he'd enjoy some time in the Oval Office with his wife, Lorene. Since he barely had any time to see her anymore. Do you think you want him over in Georgia, she asked. Oh, the people there were ecstatic. They love it here. It's coming to the news now, the president said, giving a hug to his wife before turning on the TV, it said, in the darkness. Good evening, everybody. This is Howard Rye with the NBC Nightly. We're here to talk once more about President Wallace, the this time in Georgia, on a Hearts and Minds campaign. I'm joined by, tonight by Dr. Sebastian Roth. A political analysis working with the Republican Democratic office from just an hour down the road from the rally in Macon, Georgia. From what we heard, Dr. Roth, President Wallace gave a rousing in, as the people of Atlanta have said, outstanding speech in front of the city hall about his work to fight for the freedoms and liberties of both Georgians and all Americans. What's your response? Lorene Pat, playfully patted Georgia's shoulder, give him a look of congratulations for his work. Well, Mr. Rogg, and to be honest with you, it's quite appalling that my fellow Georgians have resorted to the radical rhetoric of President George Z. Wallace, sir. To be honest with you, Mr. Rogg, one of the best words to describe President Wallace's actions in Atlanta is the same one whispered about, about him that no one wants to say. Absolutely racist. Absolutely horribly racist. Hit him behind a demeanor of emphasizing states' rights. Roth's words caused the president to stand up a bit from his chair he was sitting in besides Lorene, as her face grew a look of worry. So you don't believe that President Wallace cares about states' rights so much as he does for, as you say, racist agenda? The newscaster said, Well, Mr. Rogg, I do believe that President Wallace does care about states' rights, however, only until it comes to butt up against his prejudice. I mean, let's look at the facts here. President Wallace may has made moves in the direction of enforced nationwide segregation, even in the northern states, where next to no one wishes for segregation. That's not a big guarantee in dem democratic lawmaking for the states, is it? The noise faded away as a couple looked at each other. Wallace tore in apart by the response on national television. I'm sorry, George. Lorraine says he gets up, walks down the hall, and falls asleep silently in the bedroom. His wife's slowly getting to bed, feeling his exhaustion. Can't catch a break. But we're doing this for America. I see, still an extremely unhappy. It's fine. You know, whatever it is. Uh, where's the bill? Diplomatic Arena. Oh, we're up here. Yeah. Senator doesn't care. The Democrats love it, though, and the Republicans don't really care for it either. Doesn't matter. We'll do well. No, actually. Can we campaign? Yeah. Alright, so the Deep South is... Look at all the NPPs. Like, this is ridiculous. We're just gonna lose pretty much probably the South. Which sucks. Deep South, East Coast. State police over federal. Um, in, in their efforts to protect and serve, the federal government has, in the past, sent their own goons as reinforcements to put down so-called riots by those opposed to their tyranny. Oh, this is tolerated in a great and free country defies belief. Enough's enough. We're going to tell the federal authorities to get the heck back to Washington and look for the actual enemies of America. The states themselves will be given total authority to use their own local forces to deal with the issues as they see fit. Issues like those violent mobs of progressives, for example. 
This should appease the state's rights people a little bit more. They're extremely unhappy, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, they hate big government policies, but we'll see. Anything up here we really care about. How's this looking? Looking more than fine, whatever. You know, since we're down here, I don't think we really need to do too much. So... Should be okay. God dang election years, man. I have to pay attention to the electorate? What? What? Nonsense. Balls are updated, that's fine. These guys are gone, which is great, great, great. Honestly, with these 340 combat with divisions, can we just say go? Might just be able to, we'll see. Looking pretty good. Anything down there? Nope. I'm literally just doing to see how many supporters we have for the bills. Because I'll probably end up replaying all this, but that's fine. Whatever. I, didn't have, I, had, I had enough time today to do it some more. Whatever. Um, infantry attack. Well, they consider elite infantry, so that'd be good. Oh, good, too. That'd definitely help us out as well. There you go. State authority. And so, poverty is getting better. Your list plus looking pretty good. 4.3% growth. The goal, we have an economic target here of uh, political landscape. Is it this one? The party's still very unified, though. Uh, economic expectations, which will help us with uh, elections. So we need to have over 400 billion in GDP. So and our debt as a percentage of GDP should be less than 14%. So the Adler marches the victory in Congress. The United States of America, a country founded on both a strong people are willing to defend their homes from all threats. Uh, both foreign and domestic, achieved a level of shock regarding its system of defense since the U.S. defeat at the, hand, at the end of the Second World War. President Waltz, ever more di 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 diligent on his fight to achieve greater powers for the state governments in the country, effectively pieced together a bill that passed through the Senate today requiring a complete overhaul of the police forces of our country, establishing a requirement for each state to maintain a force of police which are constantly active alongside a local defense division, to serve as a local defense force within the state while stringing regulations regarding the activities of these police forces and their methods of enforcement. The country as a whole, however, remains heavily divided on the issue. The Walsh administration finds the American Defense Reordinment Act, known as Ard ADRA, to be one of the crowning pieces of legislation accomplishment for the President, George C. Walsh. The President addressed the nation regarding the success of the act, saying the American Defense Reorder uh, Reordinment Act will allow the great people of this Union of States to maintain law and order however they see fit. Furthermore, the local defense division of each state will guarantee a level of security and defense is not handed down from Washington, D.C. as they have never have been before. The establishment of the LDDs has already inspired several thousands of applicants looking to potentially enlist to serve the state and country. However, the rift has grown wild in the country as many find ADRA to be a direct violation of the status of the United States as a strong world power. ADRA is a stain of the ability of the United States to stand as a global world power, one fierce World War II veteran proclaimed in protests in Washington, D.C. How on earth are we meant to secure ourselves on the world stage when we're so busy beating our own citizens for knowing a little Japanese or German? Several similar protests broke from both World War II veterans and pacifistic groups have broken out across the country. A United States once more legitimize state's authority. The federal government and the state governments do not always see eye to eye on things, nor should they. States, after all, have a more clear picture of what's best for them than the ivory tower politicians in the capital who are busy, too busy, making sure the Japanese don't blow up the world to care. So, state governments should have much more power, or at least a say, in how they're governed. Specifically, with regards to ensuring that the Constitution is abided by, some state governors might consider certain laws to be unconstitutional and should have the right to reject and avoid any directives that defy the Constitution, per their perception of it, at least. Yeah. We're still doing well, though. Still doing quite well. Oh, we we kill these guys up too. My bad. Um, you know what? Let's go and kill these guys up north first. Um, oh, campaign the Rockies. Yeah, basically we're I, I isolating our biggest fans, basically, which is not good, but whatever. Are you being there? Nope. All right, let's go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just worried about the deep south. <sighs> deep south, east coast. That's the most I'm worried about. All this region here. Everyone else is probably going to... I don't know if we get any more, because we already have technically 76 MPP senators and whatnot, but you know, whatever. Oh, it's going to hurt admin efficiency as well. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well. Whatever. France sides with Italy. Oh, okay. For all that is good and holy, when is this going to get done? Stability is what? 1%. Oh, Jesus Christ. Who got the Germans? 
Oh, good God. Yeah. Upper South, Lower South, New England is okay ish. Yeah. Oh. Wait, the Guangxi Clique. Oh. Oh, you guys are actually doing okay ish. Oh, they actually got uh, this. these guys are here too. Shang-Chi. Oh, that's interesting. They're actually doing relatively okay ish. Polls are updated. Go in there. There we go. I just want to take them out so it makes it easier for everybody else. Man, the, the Free French Force are doing relatively okay. I'm also constantly looking here to see if they're extremely unhappy. They're unhappy now. That's better. But segregation. I don't want to do that much segregation for now. It gets segregated, but uh, I'll keep going this way. You are a citizen of the state of the Union. America is a glorious land for sure, but perhaps we should have focused too much on praising the whole before the parts that make it up. When people think politics, they just think DC. Not the legislative battles going on in their own state courts, which is extremely true, actually, still to this day. Um, we must remind the people that true representation begins at home, and President Wallace means to give a big old fancy speech to achieve this. The people must always salute old glory, of course, but by getting them to remember the cause of their own state as well, we get them more interested in local politics, and doing so we secure more support to defend each state's way of life. So now they're only unhappy, which I think is a great thing for us. Improvement. Civil rights cause chaos. The president always sat down with Arlen Bird again, go over the reports that handed him uh, by over local, state, and federal authorities across the country. Everywhere they looked, they saw a similar set of circumstances. The enforcement of segregation policy had grown stronger, prompting a reaction to protest. Now, with the cycle continuing, these protests were growing bigger, bloodier, and uglier. Now, metropo metropolitan areas throughout the United States were consuming protests while burning in riots. Oh, it's going to be looking horrible to be given to these miscreants. These criminals, well, said, obviously flickering or flustered over the state of the country in the face of these dangers. My entire party and those beyond who give support to the administration are banking on cracking down on this liberal nonsense. Who wants these people around if they're just going to tear everything apart anyway? Not only that, but the economy's bound to tank with the, with the cities under fire like they are now. Wallace rubbed his forehead after his venting. Well, sir, we already have law enforcement units in route to contain the protests and order them to maintain a level of containment over the surrounding areas which have been affected by the protests. Furthermore, while police units have been issued to the larger cities in order to suppress a rise and clean up any of these damages, the perpetrating groups appear to be far from finished in regarding to their actions. Having said that, federal authorities are asking for permission to go on the offensive and to safeguard the streets. Most prominent, prominently, Sacramento, New York City, and Denver have seen the worst of the rioting. And New York's and the nation's law enforcement are being deployed to these areas to put an end to the riots. Wallace had known that these people were furious, destructively so now, but he knew if nobody stood for the, civil, for the rights of tradition to the white American, no one else, or the government would be strong enough to do so. With strength, we shall prevail. So we can get the curricula. Look a lot worse in Northern States. We want to wait for that one until we get elected. Funding, more, 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 more. Finalize the act, we'll get there someday. Zone, we'll wait for this too. Oh, we didn't do this one yet. Oh, crap. Yeah, with this one too. Let's please the voting base as well. That'll be good to do. Um. East Coast. And uh, do the Upper South, find out. I keep looking down here, but nothing's really changed because we haven't done anything over that, so we can cut a deal later. Unhappy still, just fun, whatever. Where we get that? They're still getting down there. Uh, did I, I forgot to see any planes. Only 100? Well, whatever. Attack bombers, okay. Cast, that's what we want. That's what we really want. Made in America. Still unhappy, whatever. And then we'll do your assistant as well as encourage state law, uh, state level identification. Nice. Took a while to get that one done, but that's okay. Um, ah. So June, not quite July yet. Unhappy. As long as they're content, that's what I care about the most. Over here. Yeah, spend some money, doesn't matter. This is one of the rare campaigns where I'm not actually looking at the economy all the time. I've actually already spent like three hours on this video, as is. I'm probably going to spend another hour or two off screen with this, maybe. We'll see. Go ahead. We should have various priority, right? Oh, the RD, uh, Republican Democrat primaries. If you remember this, please go right ahead. Well, oh, as much as I want John Glenn. That's been very gold warner. Oh. Let's go with John Glenn. It might be easier for us to elect ourselves. And then, oh, I'm an astronaut from Ohio. No wonder he's an astronaut. He wants to leave and escape Ohio. Who wants to actually stay in Ohio? job. It's almost 1,800 political power. What are we going to do with this stuff? Can we suppress other party members? Yeah. 
There you go, nice. Please, a voting base, solid campaign, nice. Good job, guys, good job. <coughs> um, progressive primaries, if you want to do this, please go ahead. Four more years, yes, please. Did we win? We really just won. Holy crap. And they won in China. Just another new beginning. Um, oh, look at this. Ooh, for Francis McCain, or McCann, every adventure, every son was an adventure. No matter where he went, he always had things to discover and people to meet, which is why he loved his line of work so much. Being an American diplomat had his perks, after all. He could travel to the world all year round, with an all expense taken care of by old Uncle Sam, and now after Indian a sculling, he was assigned to Wolofia. Many of his colleagues would have protested at such an assignment, for they would have seen it as useless for allocation and a war devastated country. And as he looked outside the office, of his, well, office window, he had to admit they may have had a point, but it didn't matter to him, really. Wolofia, despite the war and hardships, was only another country among them all. He, and he had the feeling that things wouldn't really be any different here. Still, he had to do his best to make himself at home, and his, he thought as he began to set up his office, yes, with a little effort, he'd feel like, in America, feel like he's in America in no time. By putting his calendar here and his little photo on his desk like this, it'd be perfect, and the typewriter would he... Actually, where was the typewriter? Oh, crap, that's right. Francis remembered with a chuckle, it hadn't arrived yet. Well, it wasn't that big of a problem anyway. He had brought some reading with him, just in case, yet he thought as he finished unpacking his bags, he would feel right at home in no time, for after all... Anywhere can be a paradise as long as you have the will to live. Much more unified. Wow. Just because we won in frickin' Africa. Time for the elections as well. Which I'll try to manipulate as well. Look at all the NPPs here. That's ridiculous. Literally everywhere but the South is going to be NPP. Oh, good God. This is... Everywhere but the South. Maybe not. At least the coasts look like they're... I don't know. We'll see. This is a giant mess. Oh. She can click. Made in America. We should make more people happy, too. I keep campaigning the deep south there, man. We got to. Um, grow more unified. Don't need that one, like I said earlier. So. We have so much PP. What do we do with this? Seriously. I, I always prepare. I always know we're going to need so much political power. But, like, for now, like, what do we do with it? MLK okay, Junior Sassy, if you want to put that, please go ahead. That's not good. This is a very long video, too. Or quite long. I haven't made a video this long in quite a while, but, you know, whatever. And we're still down here. Just throw money at it. Oh. Images from a funeral. If you remember that, please do it as well. Someday. Best of luck to them. Courage state level identification. Back in the good old days of America, a man considered himself a man of a state first and the Union second. A man from Georgia called himself George, and a Virginia boy took pride of being first and foremost in the old Dominion state. Why did this ever stop? Let us make the states proud again. A public campaign encouraged the fine folks of our nation to take joy and honor in their home state will boast the unique American spirit and perhaps finally drew into those civil rights activists' heads the idea that not everyone in this country is exactly like them. Celebrate the diversity of the American nation. We love diversity here on the channel. Thank you. Nice. Do that anyways. And they're still unhappy, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't like reducing admin efficiency, but it, it's a fine cost for now. Not too austerity. Well, actually increase the GDP growth. Great. Another good campaign. 10 packs hike. We could really rush the national debt, but don't hurt our growth too much. Uh, Space Odyssey. There's that if you want to do that too. My God, it's all full of stars. You know what? Uh, beer and divorce. Uh oh, oh there's Spain and Portugal now. I mean, there's no point. We already maxed this out too. Here, seven more money. Oh, no more riots. Nice. Glorious state of the glorious union. Within the heart of Georgia, the metropolitan area had been booming and bustling all week. President Wallace making a trip down to land himself, and the people of Georgia could not stand to see a president unwelcome. The flash of fireworks, the waving of banners, the sweet smell of barbecues, and the trumpeting of marching bands. President Wallace was all the rage across the capital of Georgia, and there would be no calming down until he delivered the speech everyone had waited for. Uh, a speech praising the state of Georgia for its safeguarding the rights of the true Americans. The noise and ruckus around the city served the worst in the headache of all of President Wallace that morning, but to the people of Georgia, he finally offered smiles and handshakes to these patriotic citizens, finally, in front of uh, Atlanta City Hall. President Wallace mounted the podium to begin a segregated serenade with a clear good morning to the patriots of Georgia, and thank you for coming out on this bright and beautiful day. The crowd cheered heavily for the president. You know, ever since I was a little kid in Alabama, I'd only know one thing. America is great. <coughs> 
and Americans are the country's source of greatness. Everywhere I look, hardworking men fought in the workplace and on the front lines, doing everything they could for fan and family and country. Yet, as I grew up, I saw within the lawmakers of D.C. certain parasitic qualities. They loved that work, but wanted all the props for themselves. The crowd immediately roared in support. My fellow Americans, you are a citizen of a state and the Union, and you are Georgians. You do not deserve your greatness unspoiled or spoiled by some bug, bug in the suit in the country's capital. It is all my life's work. My God-given duty to secure for the state of Georgia the rights and liberties it needs to give you all the freedom you deserve. It's not a question of the politicians as to whether you wish to say halt to the Negro at the door. Rather, it's a question of whether you ought to decide for yourself. Your liberty is justice. It's righteous, and I refuse to allow some liberal federalist whack on Washington to deprive you of your rights so he can look good on the Sunday papers. You Georgians, you Americans, I not stand by you. The conclusion of the president's speech, the people of Georgia were in a frenzy of support for the president and his words that day. The bands played, the hamburgers and hot dogs were cooked, and the African Americans were thrown out of restaurants. Good for the Georgians. Sure states militias. Quality of the military might suffer, increase the state's rights. Um, small, sm small win for the state's rights, people. And which we could still use more wins for the state's rights, right? They're unhappy, so. Restore states' militias ever since the founding of the great country. Many citizens maintain their own militias outside the control of the U.S. armed forces. These patriotic bands of brothers serve their state governors directly, keeping their homeland safe and responding to local crises. Membership of many of these militias has declined gradually since the end of the war, but now is the perfect time to kick them back into gear. Put out some recruitment campaigns. Let's get the red blooded sons of our nation back to protecting the states that gave them birth. And with a few relaxed restrictions, state governors can put the militias to work dealing with these <coughs> current crises. It gives them a recruitable population, even though it is her organization, but it's only 5%. Planning speed, I'm not concerned about. Small wins for state rights, that's really what we're here for. The quality of the military might suffer, but it's alright. It's all good. It's all good. Ah. What's African Alliance? Cameroon exists. Oh god, even East, uh, East Coast now can get too. It, it, it. I really want to see what it's going to look like at the end here. They're still unhappy. God, everything we do we cannot make them happy. At 3.3, it's not great, but whatever. Almost 400 billion. David Sterling reelected. Is that supposed to happen? Wait, we got the West African Confederation again. Interim government. Um, is this a unique guy? Sterling? The Queen and the General light the fuse, digging to Alexander. Uh, it might be glitched right now for them to do anything. It's probably actually really glitched. I don't know. Niger. Well, that's an N word you don't want to say too loudly. Well, at least online. Actually, it depends what you play. Anyways, let's not talk about that right now. Nice. Anything else here we really care about? Not really. Oh, come on. An uninspired campaign. Come on, guys. America's not always black and white. President Wallace had known a simple truth upon his entrance into the presidency. Uh, the nation stands divided. It would be the stability in the small steps of the Republicans and Democrats that would finally end the crisis plaguing the society of the United States, but rather the strength of the true patriot. The strength that Wallace felt he harbored within himself. And now, with the blacks and whites fighting across the nation, it's time to take a stand. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Those darn blacks always did cause issues for us. Wallace seemingly muttered to himself, nevertheless, he knew it was going to be soon that he would have to make his own move. In that regard, Wallace had only one question. What was his move? Wallace looked over the reports issued in a variety of inspections conducted by the federal government, and in all, he noticed a training pattern. Whether it was by law or by practice, black Americans were admittedly dealing with a large, lot of obstacles put forward by the local, state, and sometimes federal government. He noticed reports of stores closed up to blacks, schools segregated, all the way to social events in southern states being designated as white only. Wallace knew that he had championed the notion of segregation and the freedoms of Americans to practice their lives as they wanted, but a creeping thought irked him all the while. What if further segregation wasn't needed? It was a question that ate away the president, but no matter what, he knew that the growing troubles of the age, he was going to have to move in some direction and do it soon. President Wallace wanted to guarantee the traditions of the patriotic citizens of the United States, however. The question of it, uh, of, uh, of if this meant the separation of school children had to be done to achieve this repeatedly flared up in the Alabama's mind. Decisions shall be made, America shall go stronger. National daddyism? What is this? We still have 44%, which is still pretty good, so. They're still unhappy. God dang it. Come on. Come on. Belongs to the states. It goes more unified. The government shall maintain segregation. Increase segregation status at the cost of states' rights. Fully segregate transport. Greatly upset the northern states, which you do, we do not want. Segregation is American way of life. That sounds great. Cameron's gone. Whatever. Who cares? Oh, that's some serious lag. Oh, God. Yeah, look at that. Um, American way. National daily social support. Authoritarian Democrat support goes up, though. Liberal Democrat support goes up. Segregation. Support civil rights counter protests. Increase your support in the South. Stop whining. Focus on repealing the Civil Rights Act. Clearly polarize everybody. 
Um, we'll probably go segregation belongs to the states. Increase civil rights and uh, states' rights in segregation level. Instead of the Third Reich. If you remember that, please go ahead. Many of the states want segregation. We hardly agree with them, but we must confess that even with us in charge, the federal government coming down to do all the work for them would be slightly hypocritical for, to our campaign promises. No, instead, we must ensure that each state has a clear path to implementing segregation on their own terms, and this means ensuring that they have the resources they need to bulldoze any obstacles that stand in the way, their way. From now on, the word of each state's governor shall carry as much authority within their state as a president does to the nation. And we'll grow more unified doing this. So if you want to do any demand from further, or uh, apples in prison, please go ahead. As the economy, darn it. If you remember that too, please go ahead as well. That'd be nice. They vote with the pocket books. Yes, sir. Next quest. We'll end it here um, pretty much when we see the election results. So. And it'll tell me whether we need to redo these or not. Look at all these guys killing each other. I love it. The warning. Oh, if you remember about that, please go ahead. I've read it like 6,000 times. Oh boy, here we go. Mm, I don't want to see this real quick. Okay, so we got six more right senators, four lost more, three more Democrats, and five more Republicans. Okay. 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 What the heck? Let's take a look-see. The solid south is no longer solid. The coasts, the west coast is solidly oh, uh, in the NPP. Mostly in the far right. Holy crap. We have 71 right-wing far-right senators. Seven centers at 11 and 11. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a good question now. Um, I have myself to replay this, but we'll see. The house. Look at the freaking house. The. Oh, no. I thought, that was, I thought that was the house. No. The MPP has 400, almost 45 million votes. 30, almost exactly 30 million votes for the RDs. Electoral College. Uh, Re Republicans and Democrats did not get a single electoral vote. How? Holy crap. Washington and the center lost to the NPP far right. Everyone loves being part of the far right. What have I done to America? This is awesome. This is nuts. <laughs> oh, God. Now we're cutting a deal still. Does this change at all? I don't think it changed. Now, that's interesting to see. Just because election day 1968, if you remember this, please go ahead and press the which is great. Now, this hasn't changed, which is very interesting to see. So, um... We'll see what happens in the meantime. Um, we'll see. I'll see what we can do about this. We'll see if we can get a little bit more support here and there, just in case. Uh, oh, the far right down here is fine. Healthcare reform. Yeah, I'm going to need to explore this a little bit more as well. But we'll see what happens. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow. I'll also see what else we'll do with George Walls. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.